the state of built in. Uh, now, unfortunately, if, you're, if we're running off that feeling state a lot, it becomes a feeling mode. And that was when we live on autopilot. A lot of my clients come and see me and they say, oh, I'm really lonely, I'm really I'm sad and stuff. Uh, and I say, well, if you've had a, an invitation to, to see you know, a group of old school friends or something that you felt very safe and that, what would you do? Oh, I'd look for ways to avoid it. So logically, they're lonely and stuff, can you see? So logically, it would be to go out, but the feeling sense stops it, and it's become a being mode of who they are. Yeah, so that's that, that, that kind of, this neural net that we create is actually our personality, to be honest, and that becomes our personal reality as well. Let me illustrate, now I've got the complex bit over, really. Let me ask you in here who can ride a push bike. I used to. Well, you still, I'm sure you still can. Oh, that's it. Now, I'm sure you still can, okay? And the reason why you can still is because when you ride a push bike, you're thinking, what do I do with this? Where do I put my feet? What do I do? And then what do you do after a while? You get a feeling of the push bike, okay? And when the thoughts and the feelings are connected like that, and the bag lets go or something, it becomes a pattern, which is shut here, in the back here, and this intelligent part doesn't need to get involved in there. The same with driving. You know, when you're driving a car, do you think about it? Go along, like, 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 um, Jason, 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 sorry, what Jason said. You, you sometimes just drive in a car and you're mindful. I'm not sure if you drive in a car and not mindful of driving, you might be mindful of the surroundings. We don't need to think about the car or drive anymore. It's funny, if you find the, the driving a bike or a car, and, and as I said, if you haven't rode a bike for a long time, uh, or we get on and we might be initially apprehensive, then the pattern comes back. Yeah? The cortex doesn't really need to think about it too much. It goes back here. So but we live our lives on these patterns here all the time, and that's where we go wrong. You know, if this happens to me, it's going to happen again. You know, what Mary Christopher was, was saying is the more that you bring this on board, and this is kind of near pertaining to living in the present moment, it's the cortex, the frontal cortex. Um, so does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So we tend to live off these old patterns. I do lots of things in RTS. Two, which Chris is coming to to demonstrate that we do, and even in NLP, and I'm not an NLP practitioner, uh, but they talk about the map of the territory. This holds all our old maps, and we just live on it, unless we use this more. Okay, now you go to a place you see, you know, people with anxiety walk down Lower Stock High Street and pick things that you haven't seen before, like beginner's mind, you've never been here before. Look at those windows, look at this, boom, boom. It, it, you know, it helps greatly with the anxiety because you're engaged in the present moment. Um, okay, so that's as far as my spontaneity goes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what the stuff that I wanted to cover with you today. So I do want you to have lots of information, even if it's just kind of snippets. Christopher said something lovely. He said about um, where we react. This thing's all about reactions. Okay, something happens at reactions. This is all about critical, creative, intelligent thinking, yeah? So a reaction, well, if, if a reaction involves to tap Christopher's knee there, he's, he's, he would have a reaction if I hear it correctly. It requires none of his thinking, yeah? You know, and, and really what, what separates us is that we've got the pause between stimulus and response, and that's it. So that pause between stimulus and response is our response ability. How we respond to things, yeah. And that's very, very important with with stuff like emotional regulation stuff, which is something that we're, we're talking about to try and bring into schools and things. Um, so stimulus response. That was the other thing I want to pick up with, with Christopher. I'm sorry, I keep going back to this thing. So time, brain, contracted states. So I'll leave that until unless we've got time. One of the other things, that, you know, we're usually driven by the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. One's excitable and the other one's relaxing. One of the things called the vagus system, which is the tenth cranial nerve, in meditation, we're, 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 we're becoming more used to that calm state. Yes, yeah, so it becomes more of a being mode as well. Okay, and as we've said, it, you know, it's not only just making you feel calm, it, it's kind of like more creative, you know, Anxiety promotes a narrow focus to where the danger is or may be. You know, when 
you when you relax, you've got a more broad spectrum of stuff. So it's more creative. Yeah. It, and then Barbara Fredrickson and stuff in positive psychology is a fascinating thing. She talks about the broadening and build theory. And I cover that a lot in RTS3. So I can't really go into that in detail, but it's, it's fascinating stuff really. Because we all know what negative emotions do to save our lives. But it isn't just about living in fear and stuff and survival and that and that like that. It's living we we live in creation as much better. You know, we've got a lot more you know, we've got a lot more control and creativity than we give ourselves credit for because as, as Christopher touched on, which is you know, more of his area is that you can tap into this particular kind of uh, you know, um, field or whatever.